Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this pop-out navigation bar. So you click on the menu icon here, and this, this pop-out section is going to appear. And it's going to have a number of different sections in it. The first one is going to be for page navigation. The second is going to be for filters, applying filters. The third is going to be a button that is going to reset or set a number of filters, or predefined filters. And then finally, we're going to have a button at the bottom that's going to reset all the filters back to a default. So that's going to be the topic for this video. Okay, so let's crack on. So the first thing I need to do is add an image. And we're going to add an image for this navigation button here. So this is one I downloaded earlier. And I'm just going to push that into the top corner there. So that's going to be the button we're going to push to open up our, our pane. Now the next thing, our panel, the next thing I need to do is add the panel itself. So I'm going to use a shape and we'll use this rectangle here. And I'm just going to resize that. It's probably big enough there. Make it the full width here. And just change a few properties. So we're going to general and we'll go to effects. The background, now I want that to be a grey colour and let's just make sure we've got the right grey there yet all the all the nines that's fine um and then the border is fine the shadow i want to switch on the shadow so you can see it's still got a color there that's because we need to go into the shape and go to style and go to fill and we'll make the fill the same the same nine 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 Right, okay, and then we've got a shadow on. Now be careful, if you put a shadow on here, it doesn't give us quite the effect we're looking for, okay? So you need to make sure that if you're gonna put a shadow on, it's under the general tab, and that's gonna put a shadow underneath of this effect. So that's gonna put a shadow around the outside of this shape here, rather than the inside of the, um, must be where the, the text goes or whatever. There's two there's two areas anyway, um, looking at this here. So in fact, that's a visual. That's, the, that's gonna be the shadow around the visual rather than the shape itself. So that's the, the next thing we need to do. And now we need to put a button for closing the menu. So let's go in and we'll use a button. I'm just going to use this left arrow here. Something that's available anyway. So we'll put that there and just play about with that style a little bit. Um, we just want the background, which is under general, effects, and we'll change the background to off, okay. Now we just need to make sure that that's the same size as the other one. And I'm going to change it to black. I'm going to change the button to black just so it's consistent with the actual menu underneath it. Default text icon is there. And I'm going to change that to be black. Okay, so I think that's fine. So now we're going to use some bookmarks because we need to be able to create a bookmark for the menu being closed and a bookmark for the menu panel being open. So let's go in and go to view. And we're going to use a combination of bookmarks and selection. So let's turn both of these on. And we can see here that we've got our buttons. So I'm going to rename this to close menu. Okay, the shape is going to be the menu um, menu background. Okay, now the other image is going to be this other image. This one here is going to be the open menu. Okay, so we've got three options here. Now, I'm just going to Put these off now. The order they appear here is quite important because that order determines the layer that they appear in, the layering. So we want this open menu to be at the top there, and then close menu, and then menu is in the background. So that's fine. Okay, so next we're going to go and create some bookmarks. Now we're going to create two bookmarks initially one is going to be to show the menu, and one's going to be to hide the menu. So let's go in here and Show, create the one to show the menu. So we want this menu, this open menu button to be shown and the close menu and the menu background to be hidden. So before I do that, I'm going to create 
going to hold down shift and I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to create a group. Okay, now I'm just going to move that group down one again. Now this group is going to be called menu items. Now the benefit of a group is that you can add in these visuals here into this group and if you hide the group you hide all of the visuals that are part of that group. Okay, so it just makes it a lot easier to basically manage the bookmarks and to manage what's hidden and what's, uh, what's in view, basically. So let us hide that. And I'm going to select all of these because these are all of the visuals that we're interested in. And I'm going to add a bookmark. Okay, now we can see that, we can, that we've got this menu option here. So I'm going to call this menu closed okay because the bookmark is basically going to hide the menu so we're going to call this menu closed there's a few options here that we need to um we need to deal with the first one is to uncheck this data because we don't want to bookmark the data we just want to bookmark the display it and we definitely want it to be on the current page and the other option we're going to use is rather than bookmark all visuals is we're just going to be interested in these visuals here the selected visuals okay so you do need to make sure you select the visuals but we're going to be looking at the selected visuals and it's only going to apply to those selected visuals and that'll be our menu closed option the next one we're going to do is we're going to hide that and then we're going to go and show this and that's going to be the menu open option or bookmark okay now i'll go and select all of these again and I'm going to go back in here, uncheck the data, and then check the selected values. And then I'm going to go in here and press update. Okay, so hopefully that should be us working. Okay, so we're flicking between those. The next thing I need to do is I need to add an action to this button here to activate the menu open bookmark. So let's go into action. So I've selected this, this button here or this image actually. And I'm gonna go and select the turn on the action. And the action is gonna be a bookmark. And the bookmark that I want is menu open. Okay. So I click on here, menu open. Now the next thing I need to do, you can see it's been highlighted here, is select this button here and assign an action to it. There we go. Menu closed. And I'm going to put the action on bookmark, and it's going to be it's going to select the menu closed bookmark. Right. So let's just test this works. So this one here is activated the menu closed bookmark, and this one here should activate the menu open bookmark. So that's has got our foundation in place. And um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start adding in some visuals into this menu bar. So the first visual we're going to add to the menu bar is going to be a page selection visual, okay? So to do that, we are going to go into Insert, and we're going to go to Buttons, Navigator, and then we're going to go to this one. There's two options here. We're going to cover, the, cover this bookmark navigator in another video, which I'll leave a link to below. Um, but we're going to look at this page navigator. Okay, so what this does is it creates a button for every page that is in your report. So there's a few options for um, for dealing with that, but the, for, for configuring this. So let's go through those. The first thing is the rotate, uh, this, the grid layout. Okay, so I want it to be um, vertical. Okay, because I want it to be up and down the way. Okay, so that's going to be um, the the different buttons that's going to navigate us between these pages here. So we've got work order details, we've got the backlog schedule, we've got the backlog forecast, etc, etc. So let's make that a little bit smaller here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the, the, the text here because I just want this text to be basically, um, don't want a box around the text. So let's go and look at the um, style here we go so first of all we'll change the text and I want that text to be like a, a dark grey color so we'll, we'll see how that looks in a second the second is the fill so I don't want any fill on 
the third is the border I don't want it to be a border and let's go back to the text and I really want this text to be off to the left hand side there and maybe make the text slightly darker there we go um, in fact actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it lighter and I'm going to make the dark text okay I'm going to make it that so we've got options here we've got the default option and we've got the hover, we've got the press, and we've got the selected. So if we look here, selected, the color is going to be white, so it's fine. I'm going to leave that as white as it is. Um, we've got the default, which is this color here, which is okay. I, I want it to be quite subtle. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be too subtle right enough. So let's see if we can make it slightly. Yeah, it's going to be fine. And then the other one we're going to choose is going to be the hover. Okay, now when we hover over the text, I am going to make it a slightly different colour. Here we go. Right. Now the other thing I'm going to do when we hover over the text is I'm going to change the padding. And I'm going to just make the padding just so it moves it in slightly. I think it just gives it a little bit more of a kind of, a bit more feedback to say that, yep, I'm definitely hovering over this particular option and um, just makes it look a little bit cooler and a bit more interactive. Okay, so let's put a title on here. So the title's under General. Um, go to Title, we'll turn that on. And in here, I'm going to call this Page Nav. Okay, so that's our page navigation. Now for each of these pages, what I can do is put a back button here. Now you could actually add the navigation to each one of the pages. I'm just going to leave it on the front page and put a back button here. Okay, so that's going to take us back to this page here. Now these pages here don't have anything in them. I've just created them just as an example here, but you can go back to that page and you can navigate through your report from there. So that's the first thing, the page navigation. Okay, next we're going to add a filter or a slicer. So let's go back to our visualizations and let's add in a slicer here. Which one is it? This one here. Okay, and we'll pull that down into here. And the slicer we're going to add is going to be for a work type. We'll add that in. I want it to be a drop down. And I'm just going to configure this to um, go to effects. So background's going to be off. And we'll just leave, in fact, actually, let's go to the visual and let's go for um, values. And we make that colour just a little bit darker, just so it hangs, just so it, it stands a little, a little bit. And we will change the values here to be um, a darker colour too. Okay, so we can start to select these values here, and we can see that's impacting on the rest of the the dashboard. So that is great. So that's the first slicer, and then let's add another one in. So I'm going to copy this slicer. I'm going to paste it. So all the formatting's done. Now, what I need to do here is add a new field in here, which is going to be condition for work. Okay, so we've now got the page navigation and we've now got these slicers. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a button that adds a pre-selected selection of filters. Okay, so rather than go and add in two or three different filters, we're going to press a button that's going to allocate those filters straight away. So let's go and select a button. I'm going to use a blank button here, and this button is going to be go button, and let's go to style and text. Default text is on, and the, it's going to be um, a filter critical work. We'll leave the border on. Let's go to general. Well, we can leave the background on and make it. Transparent, here we go. And let's go back into the button and I'm going to change the text to be black. Filter critical work. Okay, we'll maybe put a shadow into this. So let's put a shadow. Now remember it's in the visual we want to put the shadow, so we've got this effect and then stick in shadow here. And that just makes it pop a little bit. Okay, now let's go and create a bookmark. Okay, so before we explore the different options here, for bookmarks, I need to create another bookmark. And that is going to be the one we're going to allocate to this button here. 
So let's open this up. And this bookmark is going to be for critical work. Now, critical work in this example is going to be anything that is, um, let's see, greater than 100 days old. And there's a priority one. In fact, we'll make it greater than 100 days old, 50 to 100 days. We'll make it both of these categories here. And the criticality is one, which means it's safety critical. Okay, so we can see there's only two, but that's what we want. We want it to be a very small number because we want it to be something that doesn't happen. We want it to be zero, really. So that is going to be the bookmark that we need to create. So let's just rename this book. Uh, no, we don't need to rename the bookmark. We need to add the bookmark. So I'm going to go and add the bookmark. And in here, we are going to leave this data option selected. Okay, now the reason for that is, is because we want to actually bookmark this specific data. And when we, when we leave this option and the display on the current page, etc., it's going to basically ensure that we actually apply these values here every time. So let's go and also we're going to, rather than use selected visuals, we want to apply it to all visuals. Okay, because we don't, we want it to be everything that's actually in here is going to have the bookmark applied to it. So let's go in and update that. And we'll rename it. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to add that in, update. Okay, so now what's going to show is our critical work. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create another bookmark before we start practicing with this one here and showing you what this one does to reset all the fillers. Okay, so let's go and add in a button. And we've got a button for reset here. So we'll add that to the bottom there. And we will, let's go and get rid of the background here. In fact, it's under general, effects, and background. And we'll change it to, change the actual icon itself. There's its icon, and we'll change that to be black. Okay, so just because it's the same as this one at the top here. So that one there is going to be to reset the fillers. So let's open this up. Get rid of all these, get rid of all these. And we just want to make sure that there's no filters applied. Okay, well, work criticality 4 is fine because we've applied a filter to that card. Um, but everything else is fine. No filters are applied here, etc. Yeah, that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and create another bookmark. And I'm going to rename this to Reset Filters. And then I'm going to go leave the data on, leave all visuals on, and I'm going to update that. Okay, so now if I go and click on this one here. Ah, okay, do you see what's happened here? We've got this on here, so I need to go and make sure this is minimized and I'm going to go and update this. Okay, so now we can see we're switching between show safety critical work and reset filters. Now, the next thing we need to do is sort out this bookmark at the side here. So I've been adding visualizations into here, but now it's time to go and um, and just update that to make sure that these bookmarks here, when I click on close, you see it's not hiding this here. And when I click on open, it's well it's showing the background really. So what I'll do is find this menu item here. And I'm going to go and pull in the slicer. And we just need to make sure that it goes in front of this menu background here. I'll pull in this other slicer. I'll pull in the page navigation. Um, I'm going to pull in this button here, which I'm going to rename Reset. And then I'm going to pull in this button here, which I think, yep, we can see that's been selected there. That is going to be the I could work. Okay, so let's pull these in as well. Okay, so now when we go into 
menu closed. Everything's closed. And we've got the menu open and everything's open, hopefully. Okay, so if I just demonstrate the difference between the options to um, to show and to show to include the data or not to include the data. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select this option here. Okay, so that's filtered everything for those critical work orders that we're interested in. Now I can click on here and it's not going to impact that data. Okay, now I could actually go in here and I could remove these manually. Okay, and then I can click back on here and we can see it's only opening and closing this. Okay, so it's not making a difference to the actual data. However, if I go in here and press this reset, it's going to impact the data. Okay, because it's going to apply those values to the data and it's not going to impact this this value, this, um, this menu here. So just a little bit of a subtle difference between the, the that, that data checkbox. Right, okay, so that is us for that neat little menu bar here. We could, we could tart this up a little bit and add extra bits and pieces, but hopefully you get the concept here. You could add other visuals in here, and perhaps a last update um, date and time, and um, other sort of utilities that you might want to see and then hide again, and just to keep it nice and simple and nice and, and, nice and neat. So if you found this useful, it would be appreciated if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I release a new video, which is more or less every week. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.